Hey everybody, so it's a nice rainy day in southern Indiana and we're fixing to head out to the factory today. We've got about a three and a half hour drive. We're, we just got done unhooking everything from the RV. We're gonna pull on the sides. Hopefully they all go in without a problem. The only real issue we've had here is that a storm came up and of course it bent one of the awnings. So it was about, the, the awnings on this are supposed to retract automatically if the wind gets too high. Well, unfortunately, the gust of wind came up in about a second or two. So by the time I looked out at the awnings, they were flapping up in the wind. So we'll have to have the factory fix that while they're at it. Uh, the only issue that we have coming up that we know of for sure is that our Jeep Grand Cherokee, it has kind of a death wobble when you go and you start out from a, um, a stop and if you go real slow and make a turn the steering wheel starts to oscillate and the front wheels start to oscillate and what happens is the Jeep continues to go back and forth quite violently it's actually enough to shake the whole motorhome so basically what you have to do is you have to stop you have to let it reset and then you have to continue on so on our trip here this is this had happened about pretty much every turn that we made so we're gonna try a fix. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this two pound weight here and we are going to strap it on to the bottom of the steering wheel. And hopefully that will be enough weight on the steering wheel to stop the oscillation. And I think Angie's gonna ride in the Jeep as we go around the campground here to see if it works or if it makes the problem worse. Uh, although we don't know when we go down the freeway if the problem's gonna get worse or if it's gonna get better. I guess we'll only know when we get up to about uh, 60 miles an hour and then we'll be able to tell. So stick with us and uh, we'll see how it goes. So it looks like we've got everything all hooked up here. The bars are facing the right way. Everything appears to be level. So that shouldn't be an issue. We're just trying to figure out why the front tires are oscillating or the steering in general. And we pretty much hook it up. We've tried a few different ways of hooking it up, but um, it always ends up to be the same. So now what Angie's gonna do here is she is going to attach the weight. Yeah. And we'll see how that works. I don't know. It's gonna help uh, you probably need some help on that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's... Uh, I think I got that. I think I got it. I'm just gonna get it loosely and then tighten it up once I got it on there. That's a good idea. Yep. We just don't want it to uh, flop. So I was trying to. Around. There we go. Yep. There we go. Nice. I just want to be able to have it, some force on there. Do we have one more strap? Oh, you bet. Let's put let's put one more strap over the center just over to make center. sure. Here. Yeah. There we go. Cut that about that that length right there. There you go. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is going to work or what's going to oh, happen. Oh, it's not. Here, well, it's, it's a good try. We have to try it. Okay. All right. We might be able to do this before the rain even. I know. How exciting. So. So we'll see if this apparatus will work. Help <laughs> our <laughs> help our our death wobble.
Now let's see. This is the freakiest thing to ride in right now. We'll still try it again here, hopefully. steering wheel didn't work as you could probably tell yeah. by the video <laughs> so we're going to I guess leave it and figure something else out later I guess we'll get on the road unfortunately we don't have a camera that we can point at the Jeep so that everybody can see what's going on but um, we'll see if we can rig something up later well we're on our way up to the factory in uh, Decatur Indiana and we started out, the one engine light was on, the one on the top there. That was on the whole way, pretty much when we left. Now we're at 119 miles, and the other check engine light came on with a low death warning. I would imagine that pretty soon we're going to have the red light come on. And so, the beeping. And the beeping too, yeah. So right now the jacks are the only thing that are beeping, but that's we can, we can deal with that. Um, so we're going to... We're going to keep going down the road here. Uh, I think we're at about 25% less power right now. So if the red light comes on, then I think it, it cuts the power even more. But hopefully we can limp it into the factory in that condition. We'll see where it goes. Now we drove about five miles down the road. And the, for the first time, the deaf fluid light went off. Now the engine light's still on, but for some reason, the death fluid is not on anymore. So I don't know what's going on, but that's the first time we ever saw that. So we'll just continue down the road a little bit, maybe stop for some fuel and see what happens. Well, we're driving another five miles down the road and guess what? The death fluid light comes on again. So we have a uh, check engine, low death fluid, just came on out of nowhere. So we'll continue down the road a little bit, see what happens. I think we're about, what, two miles from the gas station? Yep. So we'll, um, we'll go into the gas station, maybe get some fuel, and see what happens. Well, we made it to the Revolution Repair Facility in one piece. Well, unfortunately, most of the engine lights went out about 20 miles before we got here. So there's only one engine light that's on yet, but the low depth that one, um, that one went out and stayed out. So we're gonna drop this off here. We're gonna go in and I guess fill out all the paperwork and figure out uh, what they're gonna do about that. They probably are not gonna be able to fix it. Who knows, we'll probably get going down the road when we pick this up again. And uh, it probably won't be, be repaired. We've got that awning is a little bit crooked up there yet. But at least it didn't fly off going down the road, so that's a, that's a good sign. Otherwise, everything else made it okay. The Jeep wobbled a few times, and we just took it real slow, stopped whenever it started wobbling. But um, I guess we'll go and check into the hotel from here, and uh, 
give you an update when we pick it up. So after we left the uh, repair facility up in Indiana, we were thinking about it. And we were thinking about, you know, we were going to check into a hotel room up there in Indiana yep. and just kind of wait for the RV because we figured, you know, they told us a week or so. And we were thinking about it, thinking about the service advisor, how he treated us, yeah. uh, kind of a lot of uncertainty that they seemed to have. They were really wishy-washy. Yeah, yeah, they didn't seem to really have any solid answers for a lot of the problems no. that we had. And we got into the car, so we were driving, and we said, you know what? I told Ange, I said, I think this is going to be longer than a week. I think we're probably looking at two, three weeks, maybe at a least. month. At least, maybe a month, yeah. So we decided that we were just going to drive back to Florida yep. and hang out back here. We have friends here and everything else. So that's what we're doing now. Yep. We're sitting in the hotel room. For two weeks. It's been two weeks since we dropped off the RV. And... No communication. Not much. The first, the first day, or no, the second day after we dropped yep. it off, the service advisor called us. Or yes. Did he call, email us? He emailed us, yes. And he gave us a listing of, of uh, expenses uh, for the repairs that we, we asked them to make. Yeah. The main reason we took it up there is because we had a slide. And the slide, the top of the slide was bowing like in the center. Yeah. By a and big, yeah, by, by a by It was probably an, an inch, inch, maybe, maybe inch an inch and, and a half. half. Yep. And what was happening is water was collecting on that slide. And it was pooling up in there, and then, and then it was backflow. then it was flowing back into the RV. Yep. And so they have they have like a uh, rubber flap on top of the slide that if the if the slide is not bowed, that would trap a lot of the water. Yeah, it wouldn't flow but back in. What had happened was the when the when the slide bowed, it broke the seal in there, and then of course there was a gap like that far yep. from the rubber, and also it was right where the kitchen was, so all the kitchen cabinets were crooked yeah so that was the main reason we took it up there is yeah. because we had you know told them that in advance yeah and we figured the dealers couldn't fix it because we would have had to have the whole slide you know taken off and yeah. probably and it's a structural thing. and and uh and they didn't know if it was under warranty but it was a structural thing yeah. so it should have been it under should warranty be. We also had a couple windows that were fogging out because they were double pane windows and they were fogging on the inside. A couple small windows like that big. Yeah. And um, we had them order the window. Ahead of time. Ahead of time. Like it a month ahead like, of time. It was a month at a least. A month at least, Because yes. they, they had asked us what windows were fogging. I took pictures. We took I pictures, sent it all yeah. to them. We did all They that. said, we want to make sure that everything's in here and ready for so you. So we have it all ordered before and it's ready to go. That was the first, that was even on our first trip. Yes, that we're supposed to Where it broke down. So and we, we had we, it extended we, two more weeks. So it's yeah, probably we were, six or six weeks or two months, yeah, actually. Yeah, it, so it was a long time. So anyway, so we get the quote from the service advisor. And the quote amounted to $17,834.88. And on this quote, they weren't going to fix the slide because nope. they said it wasn't a problem. Nope. Because they said the slide bow was only an eighth of an inch. Yes, and that's and, normal. And that's normal. All their slides yeah, all their bow, slides bow. It's not a big deal. And we said, no, that's not the case. It was way more than eighth of an inch. If yes. it was an eighth of an inch, it wouldn't be a problem. Well, no, because they were they were simply going to take the, the rubber seal and move it and down lay, yeah, a little bit. Down. And, of course, if you do that, it's not going to cover it because, you know, we're talking inch, inch and a half. Yeah. So we had some communications back and forth. We said, no, you know, you're wrong. This is You this, need you, to really need to look at it out. better. So the service advisor, the next day email said, well, we took a six foot level and put it up there and we found that it was only an eighth of an inch. Well, the slide is 20 feet long. You and, don't use a six foot level so on a 20 foot. So we measured it, we took a string and put the string yeah. on both sides of it and you could clearly see it yeah. was. Yeah, I mean, you, was, can, you can just look inside of it yeah. and you can see where it was bowed. So I told him that, you know, That's it fine. needs to be repaired because we drove it all the way up there. I mean, it was 1400 miles, we drove it up there. Yeah. Just for that reason. And the owners only took it up there. That they're going to have to repair it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they charge us for it or whatever. And as far as all these other charges, um, they were just outrageous. Oh, astronomical! They were oh, just okay. Insane. So, so for the slide out for just moving that seal, they were going to charge us three hundred dollars. Yep. Well, and it's, not it's, guarantee anything. It's, yeah, it's their structural problem. And I we're mean, like, fine. They, and, they, and they, yeah, there was no guarantee that no it guarantee. wouldn't leak again. I'm like, well, 
You can't and do that. The kitchen cabinets they were questioning, they didn't know what to do on those. No. They said, well, that might be warranty. Maybe they didn't not. know. So they just left that. So we had one of the lower compartments. We had the door, uh, it was leaking, and there's a seal around this door. And the seal is rubber, yeah. and basically you take off the seal, it just pulls right off. Yeah. And there's, then you can put a new one on. Or nothing. And we told, you know, we didn't have the seal, so we said, well, why don't you uh, fix the leak in that door? They quoted us two and a half hours labor at $372 to take that seal off and, and replace new the on. new one, which is like a one minute job, if that. Um, the, we had a jack that was leaking uh, three and a half hours to replace that. It's yep. eight bolts and, and two hoses. Yeah, that's You it. take it off and you put on the new one. Uh, and that was leaking when we bought it. Originally, after it went to the factory, yeah, for, their for them to inspection. check out, they, they supposedly inspected the whole thing. This jack has been leaking since we bought it new. Yep. Uh, we had the front camera, which stopped working. Yes. $1,562. Yes. Okay. Uh, the windows. They quoted the windows then, finally. They said, well, we'll have to order the windows because be we don't have them in stock in four to six weeks if you want those done. $1,965. Two windows this big. $1,965. Uh, marker light on the front. You take it. I replaced it once, but the wires weren't long enough. Yeah. They, and so I needed them to extend the wires, which they weren't going to do. They were just going to replace the marker light somehow. You screw it out. It takes like a minute, if that. Oh, well, yeah. You did it all on your own. Like, I did it. I did minutes. it in 10 minutes. Yeah, the most. Uh, one hour of labor, $158. Uh, the awning light strip, we have LED oh, lights yeah. that are out on the awning somehow. I mean, LED lights don't burn Less out forever. rarely. Yeah. So they're going to replace the LED light strip, which is probably, that's probably 30 feet of light strip. Mm -hmm. $460. <laughs> um, shower trim, oh, we yes. had a, well, there's a piece of plastic shower trim and it goes on the edge of the shower and it seals the door. And you just pull it off, and then you put a new one on. Just and fairly simple. So, of course, we didn't have the part. We said, well, you know, put the part in. You might as well put it on. I mean, how much could they possibly charge? Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like a 10-second job. One hour of labor, $149. One hour. One hour. It's, it's, like, it's like, I don't know what they're doing with the strip, but no. it was one hour. Um, shower head gasket. The shower head was leaking. Yep. We said, well, you have the gaskets that are probably the right size. Why don't you just go ahead and replace that? How long could that possibly take? A half an hour. A half an hour. You take one screw out, you undo the little screw, and you put a new gasket yeah. in there. A half an hour. That's Seventy-four nice. dollars. Um, the uh, we have we have uh, control buttons. The the control oh, yeah, buttons yeah. that operate the shades. They're little plastic buttons on a little control panel. And one of the one of the uh, tops of the control button that that reads like shade number three. Yeah. It's just a little thing that just, just snaps just in. Just a little tiny thing. Well, that was never there when we bought no. it. So we said, well, if you have one of those, why don't you just replace that too? To snap on this button, twenty minutes of labor, forty-four dollars and seventy cents. Twenty minutes to snap. It. Yeah. Just <laughs> to snap chink, it on. <laughs> chink. So there's a, a broken latch in the closet, and two screws. Yeah, we didn't have the latches, no. so we would have had to order them. Um, so we said, well, you have the latches, obviously. Once again, how, how, how long could it possibly yeah, yeah. take you? you? It's a little plastic latch, and there's two little Phillips screws, and you take them out, and it takes maybe a minute. Oh, yeah, if that. Not for them. It takes a half an hour for $74, a half an hour for maybe, two maybe screws. They're, maybe they're, they're, they're <laughs> like screws. molding it out of plastic or get a, I don't, I don't, I don't know if a lathe making, and no, do it. No, because they, that's, that's not even including the cost oh, of the that's part. Right. That's yeah, just, just for the labor. That's just, just, labor. just to operate the screwdriver. <laughs> I mean, just to operate well, the screwdriver. Well, you know they're using a drill. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, the, uh, the macerator, which is the sewer hose, they have another connection. Oh, yes, and this is on the hose, there's a threaded insert on it. And then there's an end that fits over the sewer connection. Well, we never got the end with no. it. So all it's all it has is like a threaded end on it. So you have to get the end and then screw it on. Well, they they sold us the end for fifteen ninety nine. Which is perfect, that's to, fair. To screw it on. One hour of labor, hundred and forty nine dollars. One hour to, to turn it like ten times. <laughs> Done. Dude, I wanna make those rates. And then we had them touch up because the coach was rusting. So when, when they were using it, it was a factory demo, of course. So they were using it, 
and they must have been running it through salt or whatever. So the insides of the compartments, like just on the edge of the door where that was black, were, were rusting yeah. all through the coach. I mean, the, the whole underneath was starting to rust too. Everything was rusting. Yeah. So it was never treated correctly in the first place. No. So I said, well, you know, why don't you go ahead and, and give me a price on how much to touch you know, this up, get that rust off there and just, and they said, well, we're just going to do it with a spray can. I said, that's fine. You know, sand the rust off and, and, and uh, spray primer it. it and just spray it. No That'll work deal. out great. 40 hours of labor, $6,281. Can of spray paint, $25 per can. No. They need 12 cans. Oh my God. 12 cans of spray paint at $25 a can. Holy crap. So then, then we have the rear, the rear <gasps> grill that the, the, tow, that the truck tow, ruined. tow truck drivers scratched the paint on. They said, I said, well, while you're doing it, you might as well fix that. So I said, okay, well, probably what we'll do is just take a sand it down a little bit and blend it in with a spray can because it'll blend right in. I'm like, okay, no problem. $473 for labor, $25 for a can of spray paint. <laughs> and then, then we had a dent in, in the back compartment door. That was from the Freightliner in Orlando. Yes, so the Freightliner dented the, the compartment door. And... Um, they said, okay, no problem. We'll just touch that up, maybe fill it a little bit, yep. touch it up. $1,073. The Bondo to touch it up, $140. Oh my gosh. Is that like gold plated Bondo? $140 for the Bondo. Oh uh, and, and probably a little bit of paint too. But um, That's so, insane. So we got that and we just said, yeah, you're not you're going to fix that. That's, no. That's, we're not paying you $18,000 to fix these items in this these coach. Little tiny that things most that of them should have been, been done covered. when we bought it because yes. you were supposed to inspect it. Yeah. So now we have been waiting over a week and they stopped communicating with us. Yep. So uh, we simply uh, emailed them again on Friday. Yep. Uh, it's it's Saturday. It was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. So we emailed them again and no reply. So we've been waiting for uh, almost uh, over a week for some kind of reply, some kind of answer. Haven't heard anything. So they haven't even, obviously haven't even started on it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they even have any intention of doing anything. No. So we're kind of at our wit's end as what to do now. Do we go pick up the coach and just take it and try and fix it ourselves? Do we leave it up there because we still have the slide issue. Yeah, the, the slide, slide is something fixed. we can fix everything else easily, but the slide is something that we can't do. And if they're not willing to do it, you know, properly, we're, we're not really sure what we're going to do on it. So, uh, I think what we're, what we're planning on is trying to get it fixed. So eventually we can sell it because yep. it's just become a money pit and we're kind of tired of driving it from one repair facility to the next. Yes. And, and and when we dropped it off, and there's supposed to be a Freightliner repair facility there. So we talked about our big deaf issue. I mean, that was like a big thing that prohibited us from dropping off in the first place. And they're like, well, if it's a warranty issue, we don't carry, we don't handle that stuff. But we do have a place where we can drive it to for you. And we'll charge you $150 an hour to drive it there. <laughs> Well, I think it was right down the road. I don't know how yeah. much they were going to charge us, but I'm I'm afraid I'm afraid the guy will drive it like a five half mi a mile an oh, hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it'll it'll take like five hours to yeah, well, get two blocks. He'll let it go red light, light finally. Yeah. He'll be like, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, I had a full bore. So we're not. So they didn't mention that at all. No. And that was the other main problem. That was it, the main that's problem. That's why we had to have it towed. Yeah. So we don't know what's going on with that at all. And at least if if it was going to sit there while they figured out what to do with the slide, they could have taken it to the freight liner. the freight liner and get that, and got taken, that care taken care of. Because they didn't know if they could fix it. You know, they fixed some freight liner issues, but they didn't know if you know if they had the ability to fix that that DEF problem or not. Well, and that's what got me. They're like, oh, we see on your serial number that there is a call out from freight liner on an issue. I'm like, well, if it was all repaired by you before you sold it to us, how didn't you guys catch this this recall? Yeah, apparently there was that was the second recall that that they didn't fix. Yeah. So obviously it was never serviced. It was never serviced by them properly. So we're trying to figure out what to do. I guess uh, that's our update for now. Yeah. And once we hear more, and uh, we we will uh, we will update everybody. And I'm sure it's going to be 
real exciting. Oh, yes. I can't wait. I don't know about you. I don't know. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah, see you guys.